Welcome to Tequila and Terror, a paranormal and true crime podcast where we will drink tequila and tell terrible tales. My name is Keisha and I will be telling paranormal stories and Wes will cover true crime. But this is the story of Lena Baker. Lena Baker and Ernest Knight. It is said that Lena Baker already had four strikes against her the day that she was born. She was from a small southern town. She was a woman. She was poor, and she was black. Lena Baker was born June eighth, nineteen hundred, in a former slave cabin, slave cabin, in a small community of Cotton Hill, Georgia, about five miles from Cutbirth, Georgia. Cutbirth. I don't know how I'm going to say that yet. It could change. Cutbert. I don't really know how that would be say- I think said. It's- said either we can't talk i tried to listen to a video on youtube or watch a video on youtube and they said it cut birth so if you're from there i'm sorry i'm gonna screw it up so for email now on, me and let me know how to say it because wes won't check the email probably no and i'm gonna call it cut birth georgia from now on so if it's but, wrong don't yeah do not send us an email you know sorry but her family was sharecroppers she lived on a farm with her mother father her brother and two sisters they chopped and picked cotton and did other farm work to make a living they weren't paid well for the hard work so the family was extremely poor yeah sharecroppers didn't really make no i mean it was a system rigged against them yeah but lena knew there was more to the world and she was a pretty young woman so she figured out there was an easier way to make money at the age of 20, Lena started entertaining gentlemen. Oh. Yeah. Both of these stories Fancy. whole ready. Fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Lena had hoped to earn enough money to move north and start a new life. But just a short time later, the local sheriff got involved. Oh, no. Well, because most of her clients were white, and interracial relationships at this time were illegal in Georgia. Yeah. So she, she was arrested and sentenced to 10 months hard labor. Jesus. Yeah. They don't mess I around. Mean, the country's changed a lot. Yeah. Things it was a different time. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and that at that time hard labor was rough work. You were out busting rocks, digging ditches. It's not just a walk in the park. Which yeah. I'm sure these guys today they ride garbage trucks and do all that shit. But back then, hard labor, you busted your ass. Yeah. They and probably got bread and water. But it was in a hot Georgia sun with just hardly anything, probably dragging a ball and chain around. So after that time in jail changed her. Yeah. She came back to town. She settled down. She lived with her mother and started a family. She went on to have three children. They seemed happy and attended the local church. She started helping her mom do laundry and clean houses at a, as a maid for locals. It didn't pay much, but they were able to survive, and she was able to make an honest mm-hmm. living. Uh, then Lena met Ernest Knight. He was a local grits mill owner. It's a mill that turned grain into flour. He was a failed farmer who was viewed as a brutal and abusive man who was disliked by virtually everyone in town. Knight was an alcoholic who kept a pistol strapped to his chest wherever he went. So you know already, booze and guns, just don't play with guns and booze together. Separate, they're great. Together, they're awful. Not a good idea. Yeah. Not not the safest yeah. plan. But in my research, I couldn't find a single good thing about Ernest Knight. Seems like he was just a real Dang. dick all the way around. Yeah. But... Anyway, Ernest Knight hired Lena to care for him while he recovered from a broken leg. I, I couldn't find out how he broke his leg. I'm just going to hope that he fell down and broke it because he was being an asshole. I hope that it was something terrible, like yeah. somebody beat him in the back of his leg with a baseball bat. Probably was. At first, this seemed like a great job for Lena, but the two quickly formed an unhealthy relationship. Of course. Yeah. you. It's not going to be a happy story. Yeah. I mean... But Lena had developed a drinking problem, and Knight would give her alcohol in return for sex. The town disliked their sexual relationship, and the county sheriff had warned her to stay away from Knight or being risked thrown in jail. So she's already been down this road. She knows she can't have a relationship with a white guy at this time. Knight was persuaded by his oldest son to move to Tallahassee in an effort to break up the pair. 
but Baker went with him. Knight's son told her to stay away and beat her. Jesus. So, and Poor girl. Yeah. Well, I mean, at that time, it was a different time. Yeah. So, so he beat her and told her to stay away from her father, his father. But Knight followed her back to cut birth. Or cut birth, 52 ways you can say, and I'm not going to say them all. So it makes me think that there's more between them than just sex or booze. If she followed him to Florida and he followed her back, I guess there had to be a little bit of love there. Who knows? Well, it's a, um, what do you call that? Uh, symbiotic, maybe? Uh, she needs him because it's chaotic. Yeah, it's unhealthy. Yeah, it's an unhealthy relationship. Uh, She's fi- figured out that she she needs him because that like she a makes him feel... Yeah, codependency. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, but the relationship soon took a more violent turn. Knight would often lock Lena in the mill for weeks, keeping her from her children and her mother. So, I mean... Jesus. Lena said that she was afraid of Knight's physical abuse and was afraid to leave him. And she then that he often forced sex on her. Man. They say that Knight viewed her as nothing more than a sex slave. Of course, she was an object to him. Yeah. On the night of April 30th, 1944, Lena went to the house of the local corner and told him that she had shot Knight and his body was at the mill. What? What? Yeah. The coroner told Lena to go to the sheriff. She was cooperative but drunk, so the sheriff gave her time to sleep off the booze. Once she woke up, she told her the sheriff the ver- her version of what happened. Knight had came home had came to her house drunk and asked her to come with him to the mill. Lena, who had already been warned by the sheriff to stay away from him, because she's already been to jail for sleeping with white guys. So she she didn't want any more trouble. She was just going to try to stay away from him. But Knight wasn't having it. So to buy herself a little bit of time and get away, she asked for money for booze to go into town to get some booze. So Knight stayed at her house while she left. So she went into town, but the local tavern was closed, so she couldn't get any whiskey. So she headed back home hoping that he would be gone. But as she got close, she realized he was still waiting on her. So she went and hid into the woods by her house, trying to keep an eye on him and watch. She lost sight of him, so she started heading back home. But Knight cornered her and took her to the mill. Oh, my goodness. He locked her in the mill, and he takes off and goes to a church gathering. So she thought she got away. She yeah. thought everything was going to be fine. Like he's going to sober up. I can stay away from him. And then all of a sudden, bam, she's yeah. locked up and he's gone. He grabs her and throws her in, into the mill. So she's locked into this mill for several hours that night. It's a hot and humid night in the Georgia in the Georgia summer. I mean, yeah. we're from the south. If you're not from the south, it gets hot as fuck in the in the south. If you can't tell, we're from the South yeah. by our voices. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I know that's going to be a big surprise to everybody. And I hate that I ruined that. But Sorry we're from about the South. that. I think I just said fuck, too. Yeah, you did. Oh, it's well. fine. There may be a bleep there. Probably not. I think we're past <laughs> that point now. But Whoops. Really, hot as balls. Hot as Lena's lady balls. But, <laughs> but as Lena cooked in this, in this meal... She was getting madder and madder. I mean, I can imagine a mad woman. Have you ever seen a mad woman? I've been a mad woman. Yes. It's I am earlier, a mad woman. earlier today. <laughs> I'm pretty hateful most of the time. I'm, I'm a hateful tomato less. You know this. But the longer she stayed in there sweating her lady balls off, the madder she got. Oh, of course. And she the only was stewing comfort the whole she time. had in there was a straw bed. Man. I've never slept on a straw bed, but I know straw is yeah, itchy. Yeah. No, thank you. She was yeah. probably like. Going through the entire situation in her head, thinking about all the things that she could say to him, like just pre-planning the fight the whole time. Because women are crazy, or at least I am. It's fine. Yeah, she sure is. (laughs) But when he finally shows back up and brings her food, I mean, I'm guilty of just throwing food at a woman and thinking everything's going to go away. It usually works 95% of the time. Usually I'm just hangry. True. So he does throw food at me, and I'm like, okay, yay, we're happy again. Yeah. Not a big deal. I throw food at him, too, when he's mad, so. Usually helps. Food or booze, magic key. Oh, yeah. 
But after he tosses his food at her, apparently Lena does not take kindly to being locked in a hot meal for most of the night. Yeah. So she was pissed. I don't know if that would really help me in that situation either. I'd be like, excuse me, sir. No. No, no, no. Yeah. She told the sheriff that she insisted on going home and they began to argue. Knight tucked the iron bar that was used to lock her in and said he would kill her before he ever let her leave again. Jeez. Lena said she feared for her life, which you would if a guy was waving an iron bar at you. Uh, yeah? And attempted to push back him to leave. So the two start struggling. With Baker being the only living witness at this point, the details of what happened are pretty sketchy. Yeah. But they say during the struggle, Lena managed to grab his gun that he had strapped to his chest and shot him through the head, killing her, killing him instantly. Oh. <sighs> In her words, we tussled over the pistol, pistol, and it went off. So both of them were drunk. Well, she probably wasn't... Well, she was still drunk when she got to the sheriff. So both of them were drunk, fighting yeah. over the gun, and it went off. How? He went to a church service drunk. Sorry, I just caught this. Maybe he was a Baptist. <laughs> no, maybe he was Episcopalian. <laughs> That's true. Both religions like booze. <laughs> Baptists don't talk about it, though. That's true. They're the ones that you see, like, at the bar on Saturday nights, and then on Sunday morning, you pretend like you haven't seen each other since last Wednesday or last Sunday. You used to be a Baptist, y'all. I just picture this guy looking like Colonel Sanders, all drunk out of his mind, (laughs) going to the church, holding his suspenders. I mean, he might have. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. The story gets a lot worse. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Lena was charged with the capital murder. Oh. Yeah. Poor girl. The trial started August 14th, 1944, under the jurisdiction of Judge Charles Tugun Worrell. So you know this guy's going to be... Phenomenal. Yeah. Who presided the at the court with two pistols on the bench. He was a former lawman out west who boasted of, of multiple gunfights with multiple men. Which I don't know how much of that actually went on in 1944, so that guy was probably just full of shit. I don't know. Maybe he just like, it's like let's really a, liked yeah. to shoot. Send a pigeon out west and see what this guy did. <laughs> Although Knight was not locked in a town, the white man had a white man had been killed by a black woman, and this was something the town folk was not going to put up with. You know. I mean, at that time, that was not something that ha- like. People took offense to that. Yeah. But since it was such a loving town, they selected a jury of 12 white men. Oh, of course. Yeah. No women. Yeah. No people of color. 12 white men. Many of the jurors were good friends and attended the same church and shared morning coffee together. And I'm sure they talked about it the entire time like you're not supposed to do. Yeah. At the trial, she testified that Knight forced himself on her multiple occasions and that when she tried to leave, he attacked her. And she shot him in self-defense. I mean, the trial did not last a full court day, taking only a little over four hours. Holy crap. The jury rejected Baker's plea of self-defense, and in less than 30 minutes, the jury came back with a guilty verdict. Of course. It's not like he was a respectable member of the community but anyways, that, though. I didn't care. He was white. But she he was, was white. Yeah. So. Shoot. She was convicted of capital murder. God bless. The judge sentenced Baker to death in George's electric chair. Mm-mm. All Mm-mm. this happened on the first day of trial. So all this huge rush of judgment, I, what is it? How long are we? 27 minutes? And less time than it took to listen to this, at this point, she was found guilty and sentenced to death. So, God bless. Her lawyer immediately asked for a new trial to be scheduled, saying the verdict was contrary to the evidence and without evidence to support it, and the verdict was contrary to the law and the principle of justice and equality. Then he promptly resigned. What? Yeah. You don't ask for a retrial and then resign. Yeah. No. It's just a town of really great people. Cut birth if you're there. We probably don't like anyway, so just stay there. Things may have changed, but I doubt it. But it's been... I bet there's a few Kevins that live in Cut Birth. More than a few years. Yeah. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> Lena was instantly granted a 60-day reprieve by the governor. Which surprised me. 
I mean, thank God for that. Poor but girl. The, the Board of Pardons and Parole denied clemency, and her execution get date was scheduled for March 5th, 1945. Man. And there wasn't a female death row, so she was housed in the men's prison at Redsville State Prison in Georgia. So I'm sure she endured a ton of crap prior to death. Yeah. Yeah, probably wasn't a nice place to stay. No, I'm sure she was tormented the whole entire time. A few days before execution, she was moved to the death house and placed right next to the execution chamber in solitary confinement. So just a little over a year from the time the murder happened, she was led to Old Sparky, the name for George's electric chair. Oh, man. You know, they never give electric chairs name like Cuddly Kitty or Mr. Happy Time Chair. (laughs) They're all... Mr. Happy Time Chair? Mr. It's not a happy Mr. Time, Mr. Happy Time Surprise Seat. Mr. Happy Time Surprise Seat. That sounds inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but they said Lena was very calm on the way to the chair. They said once she was strapped in, she said her final words. They were, what I'd done, I did in self-defense, or would have been killed myself. Where I was, I could not overcome it. God has forgiven me. I have nothing against anyone. I'm ready to go. I'm one in a number. I'm ready to meet my God. I have a strong conscience. Oh, my gosh. Witness, witnesses stated that it took six minutes and several shocks before the prison doctor pronounced her dead. Holy crap. She's a tough lady. And they just kept zapping her. So She's a badass. She was the only woman to ever be executed in George's electric chair. The local paper, you know how they love loved her. The headline there was Baker Burns. Oh my God! Yep. Who would do that? Apparently, Cutbirth, Georgia. Apparently, a town so. that we're oh never visiting. God. She was buried in an unmarked grave behind the church that she attended for most of her life. In two thousand one, a biography was published about her that brought attention to the case. And in 2003, her nephew requested a pardon aided by a Georgia-based prison advocacy group. And in 2005, 60 years after her execution, the state of Georgia granted Baker a full and unconditional pardon, which you're dead, so it doesn't really matter. But I mean, like, it's nice to know that it's at least apologized for. Yeah, I guess. So to speak. We killed you, but sorry. Well, like, the family can come to peace knowing that, you know, she shouldn't. They know that she shouldn't have been killed and that this was wrong. But for them to admit their mistakes, the the legal system to admit their mistakes, it it would make me feel better. The Board of Pardon and Parole suggested that the crime should have only been tried as manslaughter, which would Mm. carry the maximum of 15 years in prison. If she was even convicted, Jesus. She, she shouldn't have even been convicted, really. Yeah. And apologies just aren't enough, but Lord, In, 15 years versus death. Yeah. And fast track to death. Yeah. I mean, that was a really fast trial. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Uh, and I mean, her, George Stennett. Was it George? The little black kid that got executed? George Steiny? I am so bad at, you know, my memory is. I think so. I'll crap. probably do that in the future. Okay. But in 1998, the the church raised two hundred fifty dollars for her uh, grave marker, so she finally has a oh, marker for her grave. That's so sweet! And now her relatives are scattered, scattered, <laughs> scattered across <laughs> the country. So every year they get her uh, at the anniversary of her death to place a wreath on her grave. Oh! So that's kind of nice. Yeah, that's precious. In 2008, a movie based on her life. This is how I found out about this story. It came out called Hope and Redemption, the story of Lena Baker. It's not that good of a movie, though, really. Oh, mm-hmm. I haven't seen it. It's it's probably not worth watching. Granted, I usually don't watch movies unless they're with you and then you fall asleep halfway through. Yeah, so. I fell asleep during this one. Oh, okay. It could have been... It, it could have been good. He just didn't like the beginning of it and so he yeah. passed out. <laughs> it, it's real hokey. That's pretty usual. It's a real hokey oh, okay. movie. Uh, I haven't read the book, but I may do that. But it's just kind of crazy due to this hasty trial. She lost her life. And remember, she had three kids. So the kids... They lost their mom. And her mom. Forgot about that and lost her daughter. Yeah. So All of these people lost someone. I mean, they probably also all depended on her. I mean, 
to bring in that extra money. Yeah, so. financially, that was probably a huge loss for them, not only emotionally, but financially as well. And old Ernest, I mean, I'm sure his son misses his dad, but to me, it almost seems like good riddance. Yeah. That I mean, dude was not a nice fella. Yeah, I mean, if I could have found one good thing about him, I would have said it, but there's a whole lot of bad stuff, so. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure one day I'll have a happy story. Maybe. Maybe there will be a puppy caper. I think, you know, we take what we can get yeah. on this. But that's our uh, fourth episode now, I think, at this point. Yeah, this is our fourth episode. We're kind of, we're actually quite surprised. Thanks for everybody listening. We hope that you continue listening and check out all of our social media that Keisha's about to tell you about because I don't remember it. Yes. If you have any suggestions on topics for us for the future, uh, feel free to email us at tequilaandterror at gmail.com. As always, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere that you can get your podcasts. If you are actually using a computer or your smart device, instead of trying to plug our name into a microwave, you're probably going to be able to find us. Yeah. Mm. I Googled us the other day. That was a terrible decision. Us personally, oh, not, the, yeah. not the podcast, Gosh. us personally. And I was like, oh, I come up. If you go to tequilaandterror.com, you can find all the links there. That's probably the easiest way, because it's kind of like a, uh, I guess, a content it's a aggregator. one place yeah. stop for your tequila and terror shopping needs. Uh, you can also find us at tequila and terror podcast on Instagram, tequila and terror podcast on Facebook, and on Twitter at at tequila and terror. That's, that's wrong. I thought it was right, but it's tequila underscore terror because there's actually some whole looking girl with tequila terror oh i I had to change it i was sending everybody to her twitter page oh Mm -hmm. so don't visit that i mean unless you're you're into her that's fine too probably don't go to her twitter page go to ours yeah yes i I may delete (laughs) that part (laughs) she's not a ho she's a fine lady She's a wonderful, productive... We don't know her. We don't at all. She may we be a, on her. her story. But okay, you finish it up. Keisha. All right, y'all. Well, thank you again. This is the fourth episode. And feel free to contact us on our social media pages or oh, email. God. Wes will probably not be partaking in any of that. And we appreciate it. Y'all have a good week. <laughs>